I'm going to record. All right. Hi, I'm Susie Bruce, and I'm director of the Gordy Center here at the University of Virginia, and we are so excited um, that you'll be joining us in Orlando in February for the Division II Only Apple Training Institute. Uh, we, um, this short webinar, we're hoping that it's going to be about a half an hour with some time for Q&A, um, is really just to help you get up to speed. I know there are some team contact contacts who've been here before, um, but for a lot of you, this is brand new, and we want to help you plan so you can be as successful as possible. Um, as I mentioned, this is getting recorded, and we will also be putting um, already the PDF um, of the slides are on the Apple uh, D2 website under the FAQ. So if there's something really pertinent that you want to get out to somebody right away, um, that information is there. So gotta get the right clicker. All right, here we go. So we're gonna use for a couple of questions. Um, and this is something we'll also do when you're at Apple. Um, there's a fun uh, program called Mentimeter. Um, and you can either open a new browser, go to mentimeter.com and put that number in the code that's there. Or if you've got your phone handy, um, you can use the QR code. The nice thing about this is it lets us get some real-time feedback. That's a little bit better than some of the tools that are in Zoom but it also um, will allow us to sort of play along and get um, open-ended discussion that sometimes the Zoom questions won't let us do. So I'll give you a moment to click that in, but anytime we have an interactive question slide, you will see here at the top, menti.com, and there's the code. So um, anytime there's an interactive one, you can go ahead and use that. So it looks like we've got and you see, you can you can thumbs up and do other fun stuff. Again, if you haven't already, if you're just joining us, go ahead and put your name and your school in the chat, just so we know who's here. And we're gonna move to our first of all Minty question, which is, who is here? Um, so we're just trying to figure out like how much information. Um, so have you, have you never been to Apple Training Institute before? Um, maybe you attended Apple, but it's with a different school or yep, you've come and you are a returner with your same school. And I know we do have a couple of those folks, at least on our list of 33 schools um, that'll be joining us in Orlando. So I'll give you a moment. So it looks like a lot of you, because um, we've got, I think about 30 something, we've got 33 people on the call and um, looks like for the most of you, it has been brand new. So um, this is good that you're all here and we can kind of give you an overview. For those of you, the three people it looks like, and maybe there's more who have attended, I'm just giving you a heads up at the end. We're gonna have an opportunity for you there to use the chat or um, you can unmute at the end and ask questions. Um, I'm gonna offer it up. What advice would you have? Um, what do you wish you had known the first time you came? So what's your words of wisdom to pass along to all of our first time Apple attendees to help them um, make the weekend as successful as possible? So we are so excited to help Division II celebrate their 50th anniversary. Um, so all of our materials will have that lovely um, 50th anniversary logo on it. Um, so Division II provides the funding for this D2 only training institute. Our home is the University of Virginia. So we created the Apple model back in 1991 and we've been doing, hosting these Apple training institutes uh, pretty much every year since 1992. So just a brief history of what Apple is. Uh, you know, we created this model. Our first uh, Apple conference was in 92. And as I said, since 92, we've typically done two association-wide Apple Training Institutes every year. Um, we were really excited when we were approached by Division II back in 2014 to say, we'd really like to do this just for Division II. Um, and so we had our first one in 2015. And then we've been doing it approximately every 18 months. We've had a Division II only Apple Training uh, Institute. We changed our name back in, in 2017 to really reflect what this is. So maybe you came, but it's been a while. Um, if you come to Apple more than once, you'll find that some of the core content is the same because it really is a curriculum. That's why we changed it to Training Institute and less of a conference where everything's different every year. Um, so we have a curriculum that's our Apple model. Um, that we teach you and then 
Saturday afternoon is where we have like breakout sessions and those are often very, those are different um, from year to year, but there is a lot of similar content. Uh, but we know that the vast majority of our participants are new. We may have the same team contact, but if you come the next year, um, you'll find, you'll, we often, we encourage people to bring new people to kind of expand the impact of Apple. Um, and we did try virtual in 2022. Um, and um, we're just really excited for you to be part of our Apple family if you haven't come before. So I mentioned the Apple model. Um, this is what you're really going to learn about while you're at the Training Institute um, and a little bit beforehand. So we really looked at there's seven different areas where we can impact substance misuse prevention within uh, athletics. So everything from recruitment, um, those unspoken things, like what are those expectations and attitudes, um, the formal parts like the drug testing, what are your policies? What are the sanctions or accountability for those drug testing? Kind of everything in between. So within those seven areas, um, we have developed guiding principles, which are the what's really like the perfect program, which no one ever achieves, right? But what are sort of the standards we're hoping that schools will work towards? And that's really what we'll be talking about um, before, during, and then after the Training Institute. So why does D2 invest so much money um, and effort and energy into supporting the Apple training model? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Uh, it really is a focus on um, alcohol and other substance misuse prevention. Um, a lot of what is happening over the weekend is education. So you know the content, you know how alcohol and cannabis can impact athletic performance. We really work um, to make sure your team gets enough tools and support that you can go back to your campus and impact change. We want you to network with lots of other schools as well as all of our presenters and keynote speakers. And then in the year following Apple, we are here. You're gonna meet Max in a moment. Max and Matthew and I are here to do kind of post-training coaching. So we are your cheerleaders. If you run into problems, um, we can help you brainstorm solutions. And also when you're really successful, we can tout that success um, to other schools around the country. So here, I'm not gonna read this very long slide again. You'll have this up on the website, um, but here are our learning outcomes. And we do assess this. We have a pre and post with this information every year. So we know that these are actually the things that Apple, Apple participants accomplish. And you'll see down at the bottom, our most important thing is you're gonna be creating um, a clearly defined measurable action plan. It's gonna be customized to your school. Um, and we're gonna be providing a lot of support in creating that um, along with your student athletes. And it's so important to have a second slide <laughs> that says, this really is why you're attending Apple. So by the time you leave, when we close at 11 a.m. on Sunday, you're gonna turn into us that action plan, but we're gonna walk you through the entire thing step-by-step. Step. So uh, how do you get ready for Apple? Um, what should you do beforehand? That's why we have this webinar, you know, pretty far in advance. It's October now, and you know, the Training Institute is it till February. So the, your first task, the most important task right now is building your Apple team. So you've all got the links for individual registration. You do need to register yourself as well, so you know that. So you have until November 30th to pull your team together. You have to have at least four people, but no more than six. Um, two of your members must be student athletes and they have to have eligibility through the next academic year. And you certainly understand why that if they are graduating in May and you're doing this in February, um, they're not gonna be around. So you're gonna get them all excited and they're gonna have these great ideas and then they're out of here. So we change that rule. So at least two, now you can bring four, you can bring five student athletes if you want. It's just that two of them must be around for the next year. One of them must be a full-time employee, which I'm guessing is all of you. Um, so it's just one person, generally that's your team contact, just so we, you can help your team be successful. Um, we really encourage you as you're thinking about like, who am I going to bring, um, think about 
you know, different roles. So maybe you're faculty athletic representative, maybe there's someone in your counseling center or a health educator um, that would be somebody who could help make, you know, build bridges um, across your campus. And then really look at, you know, are you representative of your athletics department or of your entire school? So look at gender representation, ethnicity, um, you know, try not to have four people from the same athletic team. So how can you really build on your strengths and have um, a diverse representative team? So our next Menti question is, I know this is early, but we're just curious, this does help us with some of our planning. I had a feeling if I put not sure, that would be a lot of people, but um, just your best guess, like we're pretty sure we're gonna bring all six. Um, this just, and we'll give you a moment to click this in. So the re, and I will let you know, um, we typically are pretty full um, with D2 because division two pays even your travel. Um, when you come to the association wide um, apples, there's a $400 fee per campus. You don't have that because of um, Division II support. And um, you also um, would have to pay like for your travel to get there. And that's something that um, Division II feels strongly enough about Apple and this model um, that they pay for that as well. So it looks like our kind of number one response is around six people, which is kind of what we estimated, but that just helps us get a little pulse um, before the end of November. Thanks. We also ask you to do some homework. Again, we'll send this out by email once you've got your teams together. So early December, you'll get this information again. So this is something that's been really helpful for schools. So we just say, talk to five people and it could be fellow athletes. It could be athletics administrators or coaches or trainers and just sort of say, well, what do you think? What are some issues among our student athlete population around alcohol and other drugs. And that way, it's not just the ideas of five or six people that are at Apple, but you're actually getting um, input even before you come. So that's just been really helpful to a lot of schools. So here's the big thing for you as the team contact. Um, we have um, a departmental baseline assessment, and I will tell you it's kind of long, but it takes each of those um, slices of the Apple model and asks you really specific questions about that. So this is what makes Apple really unique is you're gonna get personalized confidential feedback on really specific on how your athletics department is doing in each of those seven areas. So you have until November 30th, you got an information, um, once you registered and we knew you were definitely the team contact. So you got a copy of the survey, you got a PDF, and a link to the survey online. So please, the, the PDF is to help you kind of divide and conquer where you are, no one person will know the answers to everything. Um, you're probably gonna have to talk to your compliance person if that's not you to say, when did we last create surveys? Um, or when did we last create our policies? So who is involved in that? Who's you know the compliance person? We know for a lot of uh, D2 schools, it might be that you just have a campus policy. Um, you may not have specific athletic policies in some areas. So you might need to go to your Dean of Students, um, your Student Affairs Division to find out the answers. So that's why we give you a lot of time to pull it together, but it's really important to us to get that by November 30th. So we have time to score them, create a profile and send that back to you confidentially um, at the beginning of, um, in January before you come to Apple. So. So please don't email responses in the PDF or fax it. We have to have it online because that's part of how we have it scored. So we do say it takes you about 45 minutes if you've got everything in advance. So the nice thing is, you know, you only have one submission per campus. If you want, you can send the PDF to colleagues to say, look at pages five through seven. If you could let me know the answers to that and then your job is to kind of collate that information and make sure it gets submitted on time. Now we do have a video that Max and I created this year to kind of walk you through it um, because you are gonna have some questions. There's things like, you know, cheerleaders and you might say cheerleaders aren't part of our athletic department, in which case, hey, here's how to answer those questions. So that's also up on our website. So you can watch that 12 minute video. It's also in 
Um, the email you got is team contact that had lots of information. There's a paper link to that. Um, so we're trying to make it as easy as possible uh, to get that information. Um, and, and again, you'll get that information, but please get that in on time. We also have another deadline um, coming up in about a month. Um, if you are a returning school uh, and you want to share what you've done really well, we have 30 minute um, presentation blocks on Saturday afternoon. Honestly, think of this as like a 20 minute presentation with 10 minutes of Q&A, um, but it's just a really great way to share what you've been doing. Um, even if it hasn't gone great, um, schools often love to hear, this is how we would do it differently if we had to do it again. But we really encourage you. It's a great opportunity to also get your student athletes maybe some presentation time. And that's due on the 10th. On all of this, again, was in that confirmation email. Um, this is coming out much later, but just to let you know, we are once again having an Apple app. And that is how we will deliver a lot of content. So all of the PDFs from all the presentations will be found there. It'll be a great way to connect with other schools, connect with other people that are at Apple. There'll be like an interactive map and there'll be hyperlinks to a lot of information. So you'll learn about that more. This is just sort of a quick heads up. And then here's a little bit about where we're gonna be. Um, we are hoping for beautiful sunny weather. Um, we're at an embassy suite. It's really, really nice. Um, if you do need, um, if you're flying to Orlando, which I assume is a lot of folks, you will get information directly from Shorts Travel. So you as the team contact um, about that booking process. So once we get everybody's name from registration, we get that information to the NCAA, Shorts is their travel agent. They will contact people directly to get those flights set up. We do that early to kind of get the best rates and keep costs down. If you are driving, we did get discounted rates um, at $10 a day. And each person will get a $100 stipend. That is afterwards, not beforehand. Um, and we get the names of everyone who attended. We get that to um, Division II staff, and then they will um, get that. Um, they will get those checks directly to each individual. Um, we do have double occupancy hotel rooms, Friday and Saturday night. That's for student athletes. So as administrators, you get single rooms. Um, there are, it's a really nice facility. Um, one important thing for you as a team contact is you, um, everybody needs to have a debit or credit card. Now, even though NCAA is paying for everything, um, the hotel is still gonna require that. So we take the hotel room, gets on our master bill. But if somebody wants to like rent a movie or do something else, um, so we know that there are a lot of student athletes that don't have a credit card. So that's a school by school decision. So if you want to put all of their rooms on your credit card, you are certainly welcome to do that. But do be aware of that. Make sure um, if students have a credit card, they bring it. It will not get charged. Um, and um, just this just as a head up. Please don't make... Um, hotel arrangements. If you do need to come in early, please let us know um, at, um, you know, just reply to any of those emails that gets to all of us on our staff. Um, we will make those arrangements if you have to fly in, say, on Thursday, because it's a really long travel day for you. We know people like to eat, especially our student athletes. So we have hot meals, lots of it. We're going to get pancakes and eggs and all of that. So everything's both um, most of them are served buffet style. We even have a snack break. So uh, the most important thing is on that individual registration form, please encourage your students and other teammates um, to please include if they have any allergies, anything. We work very closely with the hotel staff. That's again why we have those deadlines early. So we have plenty of advanced notice uh, to make sure everyone um, can eat and eat safely. People always want to know what to bring. It's a pretty casual conference. You're not going to see anyone in a suit, uh, maybe a speaker, but that's it. Um, so khakis, jeans, sweats are all fine. Um, we want to see you like with your school pride. A lot of schools, you know, are, you know everybody's got their matching clothes. Um, you saw there's a pool, bring a swim suit, you know, have some workout clothes. Um, and the one thing is, Generally, this is the team contact. I know everyone's always going to have their phones, but there will be some forms to fill out through, um, uh, we've got editable 
PDFs. And so at least one person needs to have a laptop or something else where it's easy to fill those out and submit them to us. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Max, who's gonna talk more about your experience while you're actually there. Thanks, Susie. So now that you've gotten the background on Apple and all your prep in, we're gonna talk about what you're gonna do once we get you in the door. So throughout this weekend, uh, there are gonna be keynotes and breakout sessions that cover a bunch of different topics. There's gonna be impact of alcohol and cannabis on performance, nutrition, drug testing, hazing, mental health, and a whole bunch more. There are gonna be a lot of different topics you and your team get to get new information about. You are also going to have great opportunities to network with one another. We've heard from team contacts in the past that this is one of their favorite parts of Apple is getting connected with people in similar or different roles across schools. So we're really making that a priority. Uh, and you're going to get chances to share ideas as you build these action plans with someone who you know, has a similar uh, issue they really want to address, has a similar campus in one way or another. You're going to get all these chances to share with one another and contribute to each other's work. So looking at the timeline a little bit, when you arrive, this will be Friday afternoon, uh, each of your team members is going to check in at our welcome table uh, at the hotel front desk and as well as the hotel front desk. Uh, you're going to fill out a quick pre-test and you're going to get your Apple swag. Uh, please do note that because there's all this programming going on right as you're registering, let us know if your team's going to be arriving uh, very early on your first day, or if you need to arrive on Thursday, which would be the night before, and we'll take care of those hotel arrangements with you. So the rest of Friday, uh, our first session begins at 4 p.m. and dinner promptly at 5.30. Please send us an email or a text if your team has travel delays and will miss dinner. We know storm, snow, wind, whatever it is, like people get thrown off timing, just let us know because we're very excited to have you there and we're planning on having you there. The focus of this first evening is going to be the foundations of the Apple model. So you get a strong start there. Uh, that's going to include understanding the impact of alcohol and cannabis on athletic performance, best practices for substance misuse prevention, and effective ways to teach students. Uh, that's going to include our keynote speaker, Linda Hancock, that first night. And then once all that programming is wrapped up, uh, I'm very excited. I'm going to get to host trivia night anybody who's interested in participating and we're going to bring back our t-shirt swap which we'll get some more details on but we ask everybody to bring a t-shirt if they can with their school's uh you know logo name whatever on it and then you get to swap and get a shirt from someone from another institution which we think is a lot of fun so then moving into saturday you've gotten the foundations of that apple curriculum that susie talked about earlier on this moves into a little more diverse, more elective style, uh, picking and choosing what you want to learn about within your team. So in the morning, you're going to learn more about the Apple model and its applications for your school specifically. You're going to get to have team meetings to discuss your campus needs and begin creating that action plan now that you've got this new information. Moving into the afternoon, you're going to get into those breakout sessions. Um, often teams will choose to kind of divide and conquer. Everybody picks the session they're most interested in, and then you get to come back together and share the things that you've learned, how they might work into your action plan. Uh, and you get those team meetings after those sessions to share that knowledge some. And then in the evening, we have our next keynote speaker, Ivy Watts, who's going to be giving It's Okay to Not Be Okay, Tools for Self-Care. We're really excited for this one. Um, and then there will be a team building community service activity after the educational programming is wrapped up and we continue to uh, do this work together. Sorry, I got to keep my slides going. Sunday, um, we're going to have an elevator speech timed competition, which you'll get more details about as well. This is something we've gotten some feedback on that uh, students in particular, when they're taking these action plans and these ideas back to campus, it's really important to have the skills to give a quick pitch to an athletic director, an associate AD, whoever the person that they really want to get invested in the work is. So they'll have something like 60 seconds to practice for the whole institute how they're going to pitch their goals, how they want to achieve them, and how they're going to make that difference on campus. Uh, we'll also give you tips for taking Apple back home, what you need to have to continue this work uh, beyond the Institute. You'll have a final team meeting to submit your completed action plan to us. Uh, you'll do a post test that follows up on that one uh, you took two days before when you checked into the hotel. And you'll complete some online evaluations for us when we get to hear what you loved about Apple and what can be improved as we continue to tweak this and make it better and better every year. So that's the during Apple. Now we're going to talk about after Apple, taking it all back to campus, continuing this work. 
So these are the expectations of you once the Institute wraps. Uh, we want you to meet with your Apple team to implement the action plan you created at the Training Institute. We want you to complete post-Apple surveys on your progress, barriers, et cetera. You'll get those in October and February. Uh, and the idea with that is we'll get feedback on what is working well with the curriculum we've given you in terms of implementation once you head back. Uh, and we ask that you keep our staff informed of changes to your contact information. We'll be in touch. We hope that you'll always get in touch with us if you need any support with implementation as well. So here's some advice from past team contacts. Um, this first one says that you really need to have a team meeting before you come to Apple. It's important that you review the purpose and what to expect within the Institute. Uh, that way you're not spending time at Apple dealing with confusion or overwhelmed team members. So really giving people a good briefing on what to expect, what your goals are going into it. Um, and then again, somebody else said, reviewing those expectations to attend to participate in all the sessions. We're really, uh, we get such a high energy, excited group and we really love how invested people are in all the sessions. There's definitely no, no wasted time there. Here's some more advice. Um, really important that everybody comes in with an open mind and are listening to the student athletes. Student athletes are at the center of everything we're doing here and their perspectives and their experiences are a really, really important part of this model. Uh, this person said they're the cornerstone of your success if you let them honestly tell you what is truly happening and what your needs are. So returning team contacts, I know there's a handful of you here. If you'd be willing to either chat or unmute and let us know if you have any advice on what new schools um, need to know to have successful Apple experience, particularly at this early stage of pre preparation. All right, I'm gonna move forward, but I do encourage you all to look back at these slides that I'll be posted online. There's all that advice from folks who have participated in the past. Um, and there's lots of resources on our website from schools that have come in the past as well. So you'll get to see what has come out of those Apple experiences. So before we move into questions at the end, just good to remember, uh, these are your due dates. If you're a returning school and you're interested in giving one of those 20 minute presentations with 10 minutes of questions that Susie mentioned earlier. Uh, the due date to apply for that is Friday, November 10th. And, and everything else is due Thursday, November 30th, which includes your individual team member, uh, individual team member registration, which is you and every individual member of your team registering on our website, as well as that athletics department baseline assessment, which we really encourage you to start gathering information on early uh, so that you can get it in by that deadline. So now we'd love to know what questions you have. Feel free to submit them through Menti, to see them on the screen here, send them in the chat, unmute, whatever's most comfortable for you. And I'll add that if you are, we know that three of you have been before. So I was trying to look through and see what names I know. Um, so really, I mean, think about um, what you wish you had known or just any, you know, how you prepare for Apple. Um, just anything, I think it's really helpful for our for our new schools um, to hear. So feel free to unmute or chat or use. If you really want to be anonymous, that's why we have this Minty question up that you can ask a question anonymously. Susie, I can share. Uh, this is Jamie Trogus yeah. from Westchester. I was previously at Millersville, so I've attended twice. Okay. Um, I did attend the D2 and the non-D2 conference ooh, probably in the last 10 years. Um, I would say one of the things I would encourage schools to do, and I'm not sure who's on this call, so how many folks are <clears throat> athletic in the athletics department and how many folks are not, uh, but certainly having and engaging in those conversations with your athletic administrators ahead of time and really building this um this experience so that everybody in the department knows um what what you're doing what you're planning um 
to attend and learn about so that uh, when this, especially when the students come back and you all come back really excited with this plan and you're ready to go, um, I think it helps to, to lessen any type of resistance or even to get people on board ahead of time um, really was helpful. Uh, I think the second time we went, knowing that we had gone the first time, uh, we had some of those intentional conversations um, the second time going into it. And I, I really think that was helpful as we thought about uh, building that structure and, and some of the things that we were recommending, it went a lot smoother knowing that most people were on board or at least had an idea of what we were doing. Um, that was really helpful for us. Thanks, Jamie. That's really helpful. And I appreciate you sharing your uh, experience and expertise. Um, we've got two questions here. So this is the easy one. Um, administrators get single rooms. So that is really nice part of being part of the D2 one or association wide one. People share, uh, even our administrators share rooms. Uh, but your student athletes will um, be sharing a room. So if you're, if you, um, if you've got say three student athletes, so you've got two people who maybe are sharing, and then you've got a third. What we do is um, match them with a student athlete from another team, and we really try to. So we'll we'll based on same gender, and then if possible, we try to give them something in common. Like if they both play soccer or they both play tennis, we'll try to match them up so they've got some commonality um, with their roommates. So great question. And the earlier question, and if other folks you know want to chime in either with questions or with advice. So I'm going to go back real quick. People wanted the day by day schedule. Um, and it's also online, um, sort of a, a general like start times. But usually the thing people are most concerned about for their flights is when do we start and when do we end? So Friday, um, we start at four, although registration, you'll see here, registration is 1.30 to four. So anytime in there, um, you can come to our registration, you fill out the materials, you get your t-shirt and all the fun stuff. Um, but our first session is at four. Um, and again, if you do have a travel delay, what we do is work with the hotel so you still get to eat. I mean, obviously if you come in at like 10, probably eat beforehand. But if you're like, ah, we can't get there till 6.30, we work with the hotel staff to have hot food for you. So um, just to make sure you're aware of that. So we go until, um, Probably about 10 o'clock. Now, trivia and t-shirt swap is totally optional. So we realize a lot of you have really long travel days. So this is for fun because students will stay up till two. Um, but we wrap up, I think, around 8.30 of like the actual content. And then Saturday, we start at 9 a.m. And we wrap up again. When Ivy finishes is about 8 p.m. Um, and then this is optional for folks who want something to do. And Sunday, we start at 9 a.m. and we wrap up at 11 a.m. So as you're looking at your travel, and that's also on the website, and we will do a follow-up um, email that has the PDF of this and the other information, but I'm gonna move over to this one. Went too far, here we go. Uh, oh, we have a third question. Okay. Oh, you are not at a disadvantage at all. Um, if you're, you know, if you're saying if you're far or others, um, it's it's not common that a lot of fars will the faculty athletic rep will, will attend. So we realize those are you know people people also have lives and they've got uh, you know other things that might be happening that weekend. So um, that's that's perfectly fine. It's really people use their Apple team especially if you're brand new, like the folks who are already kind of engaged in this kind of work or have an interest in substance misuse prevention. And that's where it might be helpful to reach out to like your health educator or someone else. We have a lot of athletic trainers. Um, we do have CEUs for athletic trainers. So that's another nice selling point. But they, having someone who's doing health promotion work generally on your campus can really help your team if they're like, well, what data do we have? And they're like, we run a survey every year. Um, so it can really help you as you're not reinventing the wheel with your team. Any other questions? I'm looking through the chat, see if there's any there. Um, or any other returning folks who have words of wisdom. 
give you another moment. Let me mute the screen screen. I will tell you one thing to avoid. Um, I was in your role once. I've been in this, I've been back, I've been at UVA as director of Apple since 2000. But I was at two different institutions that bought, brought teams. So I was the team contact um, for one school and a, just a participant for another school. And for the most part, had great teams, student, student athletes might be like, I'm going to take a weekend away. We're going to talk about alcohol. Um, I will tell you afterwards, they're like, that was way more fun than I thought it would be. Uh, but try, um, try to avoid using this as a punishment for students. It's really rare, um, but occasionally we'll have um, a team um, that this was kind of their sanction is you have to attend to Apple. Um, now, if a student has had some time to reflect on some maybe poor choices around substances, this could be a great opportunity for them to kind of get back. Um, but if this is like something that it's just happened and, oh, we need somebody and you're on our Apple team, um, don't try to try to avoid that. Engage them after you get back. All right, well, see, we don't have um, any more questions or comments. Um, this is just our other option. Again, we will be communicating with you, with you um, our team contacts. Um, I saw in the chat, oh, we do have a, a bit of advice. Thank you, Thomas. Um, make sure your athletes don't stress on bringing back every apple slice for their campus. Thank you, yes. Focus on one or two things um, in the programs. And we will also reiterate that while you're there. Sometimes people are like, we're going to do everything. And we're like, you're going to burn out really fast and get demotivated. So um, thank you. That is great advice to pick one or two things that you want to focus on when you're there. Um, we will be sending you, um, there were some questions about the PDF. I think both the PDF of our very long survey. So we'll make sure everyone's got that PDF as well as the PDF of these slides. Um, and then eventually when we get, and hopefully within a week or so, we'll have all the closed captioning um, set up for this recording and we'll get that back out to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the recording.